Thank you everyone in the audience for taking the time this afternoon, evening, maybe even night where you are to listen to me and to listen to this talk. Uh, it's titled Yes And, and it's about how and when to say yes. But let me introduce myself. Who am I? My name is Nathaniel Akenwa. My pronouns are he, him, and I am a developer evangelist at a company called Twilio. You can also find me online uh, because I like to talk a lot and write code, so my friends call me Chatterbox Coder. So on one of the many social media platforms of choice, if you look up for me at Chatterbox Coder, you should be able to find me, or you can add me on LinkedIn at Nathaniel Okenwa as well. Now, whenever I give this, I introduce myself as a developer evangelist. I talk about the things that I love, coding, MMA, anime, superheroes, and action movies. So if you wanna talk about those to me later, please do. But recently, I've been trying to gain the uh, confidence to be able to put something else into that intro. And that is to say that I am also a public speaker. Now, I mean, arguably, I am a public speaker right now. I'm speaking publicly, but I wanted to get better at it. I want it to be something that I am known for, where if I'm being introduced or someone else is talking about me, they will also say I am a public speaker. So I've been doing a lot to work on my public speaking skills. And one of the things that I've started doing recently is also doing some improv. So uh, just been taking a few improv lessons, mainly because it also helps if I'm emceeing to have those improv improvise improvisation skills there whenever I need to fill some time. Now, whenever you're doing improv, one of the first rules that you get taught is about yes and. Now, whenever somebody maybe starts a scenario or kicks off, they may, for example, say that I am going to go grocery shopping. Now, the other people who are taking part in this improv play could decide to do anything. They can take this idea and build upon it. Someone says, yes, and I think we should go to Tesco. They've added the story. We've moved on. You rarely ever say no in improv. Always try to say yes to what has gone on before and continue to add to it. But saying yes in real life can be really hard. And this could be because of a multiple, a multiple reasons, because of multiple reasons. You might have a fear of failure because you don't want to necessarily get involved in challenging projects projects that don't work out. You might have some self-sabotaging behaviors such as procrastination. You might maybe have some low self and confidence and maybe you even say some negative statements such as you will never be good enough for something or you're not smart enough to do something. And oftentimes even perfectionism can get in the way of saying yes because you don't want to try things unless you are 100% sure that you can do it perfectly. And because of that, we often want to say no. And saying no is in our DNA. It's a part of what we are or of who we are. Saying no is something called a root behavior. In fact, most children learn how to say no before they learn how to say yes. If you know any parents of any young children, I think you should go and ask them about this. I've seen this in practice. Sometimes children don't even know how to say yes or to say what they want before they've learned to say no when to complain about the things that they don't want. And that's because saying no is actually a really important skill. Saying no helps keeps us safe and it maintains the status quo. So by saying no, this evolutionary trait has actually been reinforced. That oftentimes people who said no and stayed within the safety of the status quo would survive. And that behavior became reinforced over and over. So even though this talk is all about when and how to say yes, I'm not going to completely throw away the idea of saying no. But I actually have already given that talk. I gave a talk a while back called When and How to Say No 
it's actually available in the You Got This library if you would like to check it out, where I talk about saying no and talking about how you can decide to say no. But oftentimes, saying no means you might be walking away from an opportunity. You might not be able to do something that you really wanted to do in the future because of it. So we need to know as much as we need to know how, when and how to say no, we also need to understand when and how to say yes. Now, there is this really timely for this talk quote from Pythagoras. I, whenever I think of Pythagoras, I think of triangles, but he was also a philosopher. And he has a quote attributed to him, which says, the oldest, shortest words, yes and no, are those that require the most thought. And I think this is a really interesting concept because oftentimes when we actually give a yes or a no answer, we are usually acting quite reflexively on impulse, on how we feel in that moment. Now, I do not want to invalidate those feelings, but it's important that we really think through what motivates us saying yes and what motivates us saying no. I've talked about what motivates us and why and how we should say no in my previous talk. So today, I'm going to focus on how and when we say yes. How we can use those yeses to maximize our opportunities to grow. Remember, today's talks are all about after your first year at your job. You're comfortable doing what you do. How can you maximize the growth in your career by saying yes? So in order to do that, I'm going to break my talk into three sections. First, we're going to talk about how you can say yes to the scary. Say yes to the scary. How you can say yes to yourself and prioritize yourself and the things that you love. And then we will talk about practicing the positive no. Remember, yes gives you many opportunities. Sometimes you do need to say no, but how sometimes even the no's can still be positive and eventually get you to a yes. Okay, let's start right at the beginning about saying yes to scary, stepping out of your comfort zone. Remember I said toddlers learn oftentimes, it's not every single toddler, but many toddlers learn to say no first because it helps to keep them safe. And that's because we want to stay in the comfort zone. The comfort zone is a psychological state in which a person feels at ease and it's often because they're not being tested. When you're in your role and you're, you've become comfortable and you've settled in, you might find yourself in the comfort zone. And inside the comfort zone, people don't typically engage in new experiences or take any challenges. They only participate in the activities that are familiar and it makes them feel in control of their environment. And this may be because they want to avoid feelings of anxiety or stress or pain. And oftentimes things outside of our comfort zones create un uncertainty and that makes us feel anxious. And just naturally humans are hardwired to avoid these feelings. And this makes us reluctant to leave those comfort zones, those safe bubbles. But those safe bubbles can discourage us and keep us from personal growth and stop us from doing things that we maybe didn't have the courage to. So we would love to be able to expand our comfort zone so that the future things that we aspire to be able to do eventually are inside that comfort zone. So we want to grow that comfort zone and ways that we can grow it or step out. I'm going to, start, I'm going to say grow instead of stepping out of. The ways we can grow our comfort zone there are four things that we can do. One of the first things is to reflect. And this is to ask yourself about what is inside versus outside of your comfort zone. And then you can set goals, write goals to include things that are outside of that comfort zone. And then you take action and you find opportunities to look for activities to get you closer to that goal. And also celebrate. Acknowledge your progress and celebrate your successes before you repeat the cycle again. Let me make this more practical. 
I've said, I want to be a public speaker. I want to be known as a public speaker. I want to do much more public speaking. In order to do that, I needed to first reflect on my comfort zone. Right now, I am very comfortable speaking uh, to small groups. I'm very comfortable speaking internally in my, in my company, but I want to stretch that. I want to speak outside to larger and larger audiences. One thing for me personally is I also want to speak more technically and give more technical talks as well. Those are things that really gives me a lot of anxiety and makes me nervous thinking about it. But I set goals. For example, this year, I actually set goals to do so many talks. And those goals stretch me. Those goals were, I set those goals to give talks in front of bigger and bigger audiences. And then I took action. Even if I set the goal, it means nothing until I started filling out CFPs and asking people if I could have opportunities to speak to MC and stand on stages. And I am really proud of myself this year. I have done quite a lot of speaking and I have spoken on stages this year that I would have been so nervous about last year. And I'm beginning to feel a bit more comfortable in front of them. Now, don't get me wrong. I still get nervous before I go up and give a talk, but my comfort zone has expanded. And this is a great part of saying yes. When there is a stretch goal, a thing you want to aspire to be, saying yes to things that are challenging and that maybe cause you a little bit of uh, nervousness isn't necessarily a bad thing. Saying yes to those helps you to grow that comfort zone. And before long, those things that maybe were causing you to be nervous before become something that you are very comfortable doing. Make sure you celebrate yourself when you get there. So we spoke about saying yes to the scary things, stepping out of your comfort zone. But another thing you must remember to do is to say yes to yourself. Now, how many times in a day does one say yes to others? And because of that, they end up saying no to themselves. How many times have you heard yourself responding with a yes uh, that actually is not necessarily good for you? And oftentimes this can be behavior that is really closely associated with people pleasers like myself. And oftentimes it may be because we are constantly seeking the approval of others that we're always saying yes to other people. Now, I think in our saying yes, in our when and how to say yes, we must remember to say yes to ourselves. Shonda Rhimes wrote this amazing book that I read. Now, Shonda Rhimes is often called uh, Hollywood's most powerful woman. Uh, she is a mega talented creator. She created uh, Grey's Anatomy, Scandal. She's the executive producer of Bridgerton. I love uh, um, Queen Charlotte. It's one of my favorite things that I watched this year. She's just an all-round black queen, right? Um, and she talks a lot about in this book about the yeses that she said over a year of saying yes. But my favorite yes that she's ever talked about is not necessarily one about how she stretched herself and grew public speaking or how she took to the stage at TED, uh, gave a TED talk, or how she's been on many talk shows recently. For me, my favorite yes that she said was the simple yes to her daughter who asked, want to play? She has a rule after that, that anytime her daughters ask her to play, she says yes. It brings her joy and lets her focus on those moments of love. And she kind of talks about it in, in her TED Talk about how it helps her bring back the hum. Now, for me, that means that we should set rules where we say yes to the things that we value. From your busy day, try to give yourself some time. You could call it me time. You might want to recharge yourself with things you want to do. You might want to focus on what matters most and explore where your happiness lies. In these moments, be authentic to yourself and say yes to your heart. Have the courage to design your life and do things that bring you real joy, pleasure, and happiness. The happiest person is the one who brings forth the highest and best for themselves. Now, I'm not just talking about self-care. Self-care is very important. But I'm also talking about finding, saying yes to yourself in ways that you want to grow. Say yes to your self-development goals. Say yes to the people that you want to spend more time with. 
say yes to what you'd want as well. Now, even though we're talking about saying yes, it's inevitable. We are sometimes going to need to say no. But when we do say no, we don't want to slam the door on opportunity. And this is where you can practice the positive no. Practice the positive no is actually a book. Are you just forgotten the name of the author right now and I feel really guilty for not putting it in my notes but you can also check it out as well because the word no is very powerful it puts up walls and establishes boundaries and sets limits and that's great in improv we actually are taught to not say no because it can stifle creativity and collaboration it stops the story from moving forward at your work in your comfort in your job as you're comfortable if you say no to every opportunity that might challenge you, you won't necessarily build some of the amazing uh, connections that might help your network in the future. You might be depriving yourself of collaboration opportunities. Now, I'm not going to tell you to stop saying no, but I think you should ask why you're saying no. Before you say no, make sure you have a clear of understanding of why. Because like I said before, most people tend to say no reactively, maybe out of avoidance. And these types of no's can often stem from fear or guilt or anger. And if you want your no to be positive, it needs to come from somewhere more proactive, more forward-looking and purposeful. So next time you're about to say no, stop and ask yourself, what do you really want? What's important to you and why? Because while no is a clear statement of what you don't want, it is ultimately motivated by the things that you do want. Saying, say, let's pretend your friend is at your house and they ask to smoke a cigarette. Now, it may be likely that you don't want them to smoke inside your house. And it's not because you don't want them to enjoy themselves or to feel comfortable, but it's because you do want to have good air quality in your house. That is your yes. That is the intention that underlies your interests. And finding that yes can sometimes allow you to figure out a way to maybe just turn the situation around. I will give you a very practical example. Now, the last time when I gave my talk, how and when to say no, I always remember it because when I was asked to do that talk, I really should have said no. And then when I was asked to this talk, to do this talk, this opportunity came about. It was an opportunity to give a talk about experiences after the first year of your, a new job. I was like, okay, this is a great opportunity. Now, actually, reflexively, I actually wanted to say no. And why did I want to say no? It was because I was worried that I wouldn't have enough prep time. It's been a busy time at work for me lately, and I've been at a bunch of events giving some talks. Now, I could have just said no. But then I tried something different, something that I also learned at improv, and that is the no but. Because sometimes in improv, you actually do need to say no, but you want to keep that conversation flowing and you want to have, give the story a chance to move forward. And this is when you say a no but. Rather than building a wall, you are opening a different door. Now, we don't want to compromise on our no, and you have a right to say no. You are saying no for a reason. But we maybe want to think about, is there an opportunity for a but here, for a place to move this conversation to? And how do we decide where we want to move the conversation to? It's by thinking about what you want. Now, I'm not saying about it in a simple way. This is something higher. What is your mission? What are your goals? I'll give you an example. My goals this year were to give technical and career talks to inspire other people, especially from underrepresented backgrounds, to build successful careers in technology. Now, I've highlighted some of the ones that are relevant to this talk at You Got This. I wanted to give career talks to inspire other people to build successful careers. This talk I'm giving right now is very in line with my yes. So, how can I take my no? and turn it into a but. Well, here was my but. No, I can't give a completely brand new talk from scratch, but I can give a sequel talk that uses content that I wasn't able to include in another talk that I had prepared before. 
I'd been worried about the time that I would be able to do. So I figured out a way that I could still take this opportunity and still address my reasons for saying no. And this way, I'm able to keep the door open for an opportunity that hopefully helps me achieve my wider mission. Now, even though I've said this, I want to re-emphasize, saying no is your right. At the end of the day, it is your right to say no. And you can be graceful when you say no, but don't let anyone make you feel guilty about setting your boundaries. But even though you do have to say no sometimes, think about when you can say yes. Say yes to the scary things. Say yes to yourself. And say yes so that you do not close doors or build walls, but rather you open different doors. I want to dedicate this talk to someone who said yes to me. My father, who passed not too long ago, always used to tell me about how every action I do in life opens or closes doors. And I hope that this talk inspires you to say yes, to keep some more doors open in your life, to inspire others to do more as you build amazing careers. Thank you so much for giving me time to talk today. You can always reach out to me at Chatterbox Coder.